Hey everybody, Mark's with the Comics and I'm back. This time I'm going to show you my comic book pickups for the week. New comic book day, free comic book day, and some amazing silver and golden age back issues. If you're interested in that, stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so welcome back. If you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when I do put out some content, you get in a timely fashion. Like I said, I'm going to show you my comic book pickups for the week. I got quite a bit this week. Obviously, with New Comic Book Day, then Saturday was Free Comic Book Day, and obviously all the you know comic book back issues I got in between. So I will start first with the New Comic Book Day pickup. And then go with the free comic book days and then we'll you know finish it off with a bang with the big books all right so for new comic book day and i showed this on uh, steve's channel on thursday ended up picking up twig number one as you can see it's already been well read fun read uh by scotty young simple read you know it's a kid's book um but it was actually, it was fun. It was fun. It was cute. Interiors, great colors. It popped. Has a lot of potential for, you know, just good world exploring. So uh, we'll see how it goes. Issue 2 will be probably coming out next month. So I'm interested in picking that up. Alright, so um, free comic book day. Um, so I went to the shop today and uh, ended up picking a couple of books up. We'll start with those first. Um, son was interested in this one. It was uh, like a Filmation's Ghostbusters like crossover with this little dinosaur on here. So that was pretty cool. That that caught his eye. So we ended up getting that. That was two dollars. Um, they had a few sales like promotions going on there for a free comic book day. You know, just to help like promote the store and get some more sales. So that was that was a cheap buy there. Um, also picked up this. Omega the Unknown issue number one. It's a Bronze Age book. First appearance of Omega the Unknown. Um, I think this is my second or third copy. Only five bucks. You can't you can't go wrong on that. Um, let's see. Also got this House of M issue number four. This is the uh, first appearance of Layla Miller. So that was a nice little pickup. And those are the comic pickups. And now we're going to go on to free comic book day. So there was a few titles I was interested in for free comic book day. Uh, one of the titles they did not have there, which was a bit of a bummer. And that was the uh, Bloodborne. So, uh, which I think it's promoting an upcoming video game series. So I wanted to get that. They did not have that. But I'll show you the books I got. They ended up allowing four uh Four books per person. So we ended up getting eight total because uh, my son was there as well. So first book I got. Street Fighter Masters Blanca. Issue number one. This is uh, pretty nostalgic for me because I used to play the Street Fighter games when I was a kid. And uh, when I saw that was coming out, I had to pick that up. So I'm excited to read that one. I got from Tokyo Pop. This is... Guardian of Fukushima, issue number one. This one seemed pretty interesting because it was like uh, based off of obviously the events from uh, Fukushima, the nuclear power plant meltdown after the um, tsunami hit. This had to do with a farmer family that did not want to leave the area. So this is going to, you know, it is a true story. Uh, so I'm interested in reading that. And then I picked up a Marvel and DC book. This is... Uh, the most talked about for free comic book day, this is the Judgment Day, uh, Avengers X-Men Eternals. It has the first full appearance of Blade's daughter. So this is your spec pickup, you know, if you're into that. Um, I don't think anything will pan out from it, but it's a free comic, so I'll give it a shot. And what I think is probably going to be the best read is Dark Crisis Special Edition, number zero. So... Uh, those were my picks, and then I picked up four books for the little guy, 
and uh, they were saying that the green banners at the top where it says free comic book they are the kid friendly ones so i picked up those so this is rima chronicles um realm of the blue mist uh, not familiar with it but look pretty cool uh we got sonic the hedgehog which this will probably be a fun read another nostalgic uh, video game when i you know when i was a kid playing this quite a bit for sega um this one i am familiar with this is from nickelodeon this is uh, avatar last airbender so uh oh, might be cool and the last one is max meow cat on the street comic spectacular <laughs> It was just a pretty funny looking cover, so I was like, all right, he'll probably like this. And uh, on the back, there's a little T-Rex there. It says, uh, Golfosaurus Rex. So he, he'll, he'll like that when he sees it. So those were <clears throat> New Comic Book Day and Free Comic Book Day pickups. So I'm going to put those aside. And now we're going to get off to the bangers. So in no particular order... I got three stacks of books. Um, a little story on this. There was um, an older lady that came by the comic shop. This is when I was talking to the owner. I think it was maybe a few months back. And I believe he said her husband passed away and he was an avid collector for many years. And he had a huge collection spanning golden age, I think up until like bronze and he had x-men 1 through 12 fantastic 4 1 through i think 8 um early avengers and so forth like big books big books um and then you know golden age it, it spanned from superhero to war sci-fi a little bit of everything so like the big books they ended up sending out getting it press cleaned graded and they're um when they return like he didn't buy that collection he's um helping out the lady with those big books and what they're going to end up doing when it comes back from grading they're going to do a private auction so uh i talked about that with the uh, with the uh, comic shop owner and just to let me know when that happens Probably in the fall. Who knows? Um, that'd be just interesting to just see with the books in person. You know, a lot of those I won't be able to afford. They're pretty pricey, but um, that's pretty neat. But like a lot of the smaller books, you know, when you're talking books like that, <laughs> smaller books like you know regular keys are going to be still plenty there that he had to choose from. Those he actually bought from the shop, the collection. And um, any of the proceeds she made, because she had at least $15,000 worth of books. And that was raw, not even graded. Um, there, I believe she said that uh, they were going to help to go towards, you know, the grandchildren's college fund. So that'll go a long way. So I'll show the books I ended up picking up. I picked up about 20 books. Um, and mine, mine varied from, uh, I, I picked up like maybe a few Bronze Age and then the rest were uh, silver and golden age. So in no particular order, I'm just going to show you the books. So uh, first book, Tales to Astonish, issue number 36. And I believe this is the second appearance of Ant-Man. If I make any mistakes, I apologize ahead of time. I'm just pulling out the books. I didn't write any notes or anything like that. But um, So correct me in the comments if I... Uh, Messed any of these you know key appearances or anything like that um, Next one is tales to astonish issue 37 third appearance of ant-man So they had quite a bit of tales to astonish like early books uh, And these are books I've never previously seen in the wild so I was you know, like I said, I've been to this comic shop many times before, and he rarely had Silver Age, like big, you know, bigger books. He had a lot of like modern, copper, bronze age, stuff like that, but not like books from like the 60s, 50s, and 40s. Um, 
Next one is Tales to Astonish, issue 40. And I believe this is the first appearance of the Hijacker. Another really cool Ant-Man cover. And these are all in pretty low condition. But uh, I had to pick these up anyways. Um, now we got Tales to Astonish, issue number 64. I believe this is the second appearance of Atuma, which is a Namor the Submariner villain. And um, first cover appearance of the leader, second appearance overall. So like I said, if I do make any mistakes, I apologize. Um, uh, first Golden Age book, this is Dick Tracy, issue number 137. And this is from, I want to say, I want to say that, actually, no, this is not Golden Age. This is early Silver Age. I want to say this is 1959. My apologies. This is from Harvey Comics. Pretty cool cover. I like that. I picked that up. It was cheap. $5. $5 for this book. So, uh, early 10 center cover by Chester Gould. And I believe it was also written by Chester Gould. All right, going back to Tales to Astonish. This is issue number 59. And this is just a cool giant man versus Hulk cover, like a battle. So that was neat. This is from 1964. And uh, what I liked most from this uh, Tales to Astonish run that they had there was this like kind of um, sci-fi cover. So this was Tales to Astonish issue number 28. This came out, this was the next issue after the first appearance of Ant-Man or Hank Pym. So this was pretty cool. You see this guy here experimenting. He's drinking some liquid and then he turns into a gorilla. <laughs> pretty neat. All right, so on to Stack number two. Check these out. Going back into the Silver Age. And I believe this is my earliest flash book now that I currently have. And uh, this is flash issue number 129. And I believe this is the first Alan Scott in the Silver Age, and also the first JSA in the Silver Age in a flashback. And it's an early Jay Garrick, Barry Allen team up. So that's pretty cool. And it has one of my uh, favorite Flash rogue villains, Captain Cold there at the bottom. So uh, let's see. All right, this was probably one of my favorite pickups in the um, Stack of books that I got. Now we're going back into the Golden Age. This is Captain Marvel Jr. Issue number 73 from 1949. This is just a really cool cover. I like the storm cloud there. Shooting down the lightning bolt. And you get the two characters in between. Really nice cover. Um, forget who did the cover. But uh, it's just really sweet. I like that. First Captain Marvel Jr. book 2 of my collection. And it's not the only one I picked up. So the next copy is from May of 1952. This is Captain Marvel Jr. issue number 109. Not as cool as the other one, but uh, still a great cover nonetheless. Um, let's see. This one is Captain Marvel Adventures. This is issue number 93. And uh, this one's detached. Um, and it didn't have <laughs> a back cover. But uh, I couldn't pass this up. This is just a cool book. I'm going to actually send this book out to my buddy Jerry. Because he's a big Captain Marvel guy. And uh, the last book from this stack is from 1959. This is Action Comics, issue number 255. This is the first appearance of Bizarro Lois Lane. 
And I'm not sure if this is correct, but this is also the fourth Supergirl appearance. She did appear in this book. I was reading this book earlier. Um, just a neat cover. So I picked that up as well. So that is stack number two. And now we're on to the last stack of books. All right. So this next book is from 1946, February. This is from Fawcett Comics. This is Funny Animals, issue number 35. And uh, if you're familiar from the Captain Marvel Adventures, this is Captain Marvel Bunny. This is a cool little cover. Um, one of the, all right, so going to Green Lantern now. This is from 1979. This is Green Lantern, Green Arrow, issue number 116. Um, this is just a cool book where uh, Guy Gardner um, steps in as the Green Lantern. But I picked this up. It was cheap. It was like six bucks. Um, picked this up because it's a Whitman variant, as you can see there. And these are a little bit harder to find, especially in, in, uh, in nice grade. Next up, going back to... So this is uh, a series that I've never previously owned as well. This is Captain Midnight. This is from 1946. This is issue number 36. Um, just a cool cover. I do like the character Captain Midnight. Never seen one in the wild previously up until this past week. So uh, just a neat cover. And uh, it looks like it was a copy by Gary Smith. So there you go. So back in the day, a lot of these uh, Owners would write their names on the comics, just, to, you know, as ownership. So that was pretty cool to see that. And But not as cool as this book. Uh, this is Captain Midnight, issue number 44, and this is from also 1946. Um, what do they want to say about this? Yeah, it's Fawcett Comics, but the cool thing about this book and we'll see if you can see it. It's a single staple comic book. You can see it's right in the middle. So they did that often during World War II is when they were rationing for metals, you know, in the comic books, they did that as well. So um, a short period during and right after the war, they would actually put single staple comics as well just to help with the war effort so that was pretty cool first book in my collection that has a single staple um, what else we got here so this is Silver Age and we got uh, Tales of Suspense issue number 82 this is the first appearance of Adaptoid and uh, what's neat about this book it's a UK price variant pretty neat and the last book I got, this is from 1953, and from Harvey Comics, this is Dick Tracy, issue number 66. Just like the cover. That's a pretty cool cover. All right, guys. So that's it. Hopefully, you guys enjoy that. Big haul ended up got this week. Um... You know, with new comic book day, free comic book day, and just some back issue hunting. Uh, if you guys like that, hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, Rockspecs Comics, out.